There is a, what, what, what I would say is a disturbing new report from UC San Diego and the Children's Advocacy Institute saying that there is a culture of secrecy in mm. California state laws regarding children who have been seriously abused or killed. Robin Sachs, our legal analyst, is here. And of course, society's first role is to protect children. That goes in the opposite direction. It does go in the opposite direction. What UC San Diego did in the Children's Advocacy Institute on behalf of kids with First Star Organization went together and did a good old fashioned report card. They borrowed the mechanism that was used in the old seatbelt day laws to All be right. able to see if that, you know, one state gets an A, one state gets a B in order to shame states, one state to another, say, listen, this is how they're doing it. Well, let me shame California. Arizona got an A plus. Mm. We have a C here in California and we dropped actually from a B to a C because our laws have been, more and more laws have been created here in California to prevent access for information, to Why? prevent Why? us to know. Why would that be? Why would anybody, what legislator would would be in favor of that. Well, what they do, what the legislators do to justify it is say, listen, we are all about protecting minors' privacy. This is stuff mm -hmm. that has to do with the intimate details of their life. Well, let me tell you, a dead kid does no. not care about their privacy rights. Right, exactly. A dead kid A child is a child. They have no, It's they can't make conscientious decisions about themselves and their health. That, that's what parents are for. That's right, and what they're doing and what they're hoping to advocate for is that there is simply, not only just disclosure, not only uh, information being available for all of us to know, but more importantly, for children to have proper representation. A lot of people don't necessarily realize that there's three courts within that, that kids have to deal with if they're an abused child. Okay. There could be a criminal case, whereas someone who has actually abused them could be held criminally responsible. There's the family court, where if there was a divorce going on. But there's this third court called the dependency court. And the dependency <sighs> court is the court that decides if parents should have parenting rights or not. This is a separate issue, but I saw in, in the news today, and I hope we're doing the story, where a woman took her five-year-old daughter to a tanning salon, put her in it. It got by the people. The, they found out. They arrested her. Now, child services is involved. That is an, that's, that's child abuse. That is a, Putting a five-year-old in a tanning bed? That's crazy, and I can tell you it seems like oftentimes that it's an act of God to get a kid removed from yeah, a house. from a house, yeah. And, and there's such a favoritism towards parental rights, and that's fine. I, I'm not it's even saying. It's gotta be hard for social workers to go in and see some of these the shenanigans going on and then not have any power to pull the child out and bring them to safety. Well, and we can't discuss it and know about it because of these laws and the secrecies. What they happens is these dependency courts are, are closed. There are no cameras, there's no media, there's no information, and very often the kids Kids are not represented and there's no requirement right. that they be represented all the way through. Everybody else gets a lawyer. Why, Why don't kids they? have a voice? Robin Sachs, thank you. We're obviously going to hear more about that. Thank you very and much. Let's try to get